I thank the gentleman. And now the gentleman from Arkansas, Mr. Westerman, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, panel, for your uh, insight today. Uh, Mr. Will Schuson, I'll direct this question to you, but others may wish to um, add in on it. I've visited several power generating facilities, and I was um, pleased to find out that the control systems inside the power plants are totally isolated from the outside world and the facilities I visited, so the chance of a cyber attack on the actual generating facilities is pretty much mitigated unless a bad actor got into the facility and messed with the control system, which could cause a, a huge issue. So when we're talking about a cyber attack, what physically are the risks there since these, these power plants are basically just getting a demand signal from the grid? What kind of destruction do you anticipate could happen from a cyber attack? Well, first of all, I will first uh, ask about your premise that the internal or the industrial control systems networks are indeed isolated and separated from other external networks or company uh, uh, communications networks. Uh, what we have found and what uh, I had seen reported through ICS CERT and others is that often companies believe their industrial control systems networks may be uh, air gapped, if you will but are surprised to find when, in fact, they are not. And with the introduction increasingly of information and communications technologies, we're finding increasingly that these uh, networks are indeed uh, interconnected with other networks. And so that's one thing, you know, but given that, and if they are air-gapped, it, it does provide an additional level of security, certainly, to where remote access may not be available and where an attacker may have to have physical access to the device. Uh, but it is, uh, to be sure, you know, that's something that uh, if they are air gap, that is a, an improvement in the control over it. But, and that's what has been historically, but increasingly we're finding and what's being reported is that they are being interconnected with internal and external networks. So Thereby, the as Ms. Lee uh, mentioned, increasing the attack surface and increasing the likelihood of a potential incident over those industrial control systems networks. So is that the main concern with cyber attacks, is getting into those well, power generating facilities control systems, or is it more to protect the distribution and transmission systems? Well, I think you have that probably at multiple sections throughout the entire electricity grid, depending upon where the control systems or the sensors are located, if they are indeed interconnected to external networks, there's an increased likelihood that they may be vulnerable to attack if they're not sufficiently hardened. Of course, there are actions that an entity can take to better secure those connections and to better secure those devices. Uh, if those are being done, that will help. But historic, uh, historically, that always hasn't been done for a number of reasons. It just seems like it would be a good operating protocol to have those industrial control systems isolated from the outside world as far as having a, uh, the best way to keep uh, a cyber attack from happening on one of those facilities. Yes, that's correct, but often they're interconnecting in order to provide greater efficiency and uh, usefulness, if you will, and so there's always that balance. But yes, it would be better from a security perspective to keep them isolated. So when we talk about the role that smart grid technology plays in creating cyber vul vulnerabilities, does the fact that the smart grid relies on two-way communication make the grid more susceptible to cyber attacks? And if so, how, how is that? Well, potentially, and that would be, as Mr. Gaines mentioned, you know, more at the distribution level rather than at the power generating and transmission level, if you will, where there could be attacks, if you will, against uh, individual smart meters, and indeed I believe there have been reported attacks against smart meters, but more for the purpose of committing fraud and, and uh, addressing some of the programming that is in those smart, mo uh, smart meters. Uh, but the threat potentially is, and again with absent other controls that may now be in place, is that collectively with as millions of smart meters out there, could that have an impact on the, the larger electricity grid? And that's something that there potentially could. And when you talk about smart meter, are you talking about the meters that give the feedback or just the ones that the meter reader can drive through the neighborhood and, 
and read the meter without getting out of the vehicle or those? Yeah, that, that would be included in that, yes. I think I'm out of time, Mr. Chairman.